We are now recording. All right. Uh, any questions before we get rolling here? Uh, nope. I'm ready. It's Lauren. Uh, Car Coach Reports is the website that we refer people to, and at yeah. Lauren Fix on all social. And we'll we'll get when we get to the part where I say, "Hey, tell me how people can get can reach out to you." That'll be a really good spot for us okay. to uh, to start. All right. Great. Here we go. In, Excellent. Uh, Thank you. In three seconds. Here we go. Ford Mustang community, those that are listening live on Facebook right now and those that are listening back on the replay here on the podcast. For those looking for more, more, more Classic Mustang Connection, here's how you do it. On Facebook, join our group. It's probably where you're watching it right now live. If you are watching live, it's at the mustangpodcast.com forward slash Facebook and get bonus content, videos, interviews just like this. And to add to the conversation, plus you get to talk to me if you want to get exclusive events only provided to those that are in the group. It's at the mustangpodcast.com forward slash Facebook. Also, we are now on Instagram. Check out our Instagram page for some amazing photos of those classic Mustangs in our community. It's at the mustangpodcast.com forward slash Instagram. And of course, if you want to get the entire catalog of back episodes of the show, that's over 80 episodes of the recording of this, check out our website at the mustangpodcast.com. All right, let's get on to today's guest. So I really, and literally in five minutes of pre-conversation, the two of us talking together, it's like I'm drinking from a fire hose and she's drinking from a fire hose too. We don't know what to say, but we say a lot of it all at the same time. Lauren Fix is a nationally recognized automotive expert. She's a media guest. She's a journalist. She's an author. She's a keynote speaker and is a television host. Lauren provides an insider's perspective on a wide range of automotive topics, including energy and safety issues for both the auto industry and consumers. Her analysis is honest and it's totally straightforward. As you will see, she is a no holds barred kind of gal. <laughs> Specifically for today, Lauren is a classic Mustang community member. She's the first gen. She is a first gen owner and an enthusiast. Lauren, I'm so excited to talk to you. The car coach, welcome to Ford Mustang, the early years podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I've been listening to you guys and it's great to be a guest. Well, I'm excited to have you here. And, and I guess I want to start with a question just about how the hell did you get wrapped up in this crazy, as we say in Yiddish, fakakta industry, which just means just all over the place industry, because it really can be all over the place. Well, my father worked for the big three automakers. So he was an, actually a charter member of the Thunderbird Club in 1955. Uh, that was his first job out of Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, so we had a Thunderbird in the garage and we also had a 67 Corvette because from after Ford, he went to gems. Everyone kind of moved around. And then in 1970, when he moved to Chrysler, we had a Mopar in the garage. So as a kid, I was didn't know anything about cars. I wasn't really into dolls. I was more into matchbox cars. And I'd asked my father questions and he told me about them. So as a, a GM guy and he loved his Corvettes, um, I went out to get my first car, which was a Camaro. And I took it out to an autocross. It was an absolute stone. So the person I was with said, you got to try the Mustang and after that, I was totally sold on Mustangs. I had my first one was a 79 Mustang Cobra with a V8 when the V8 came back in 79. Of course, that wasn't necessarily a performance car now. But as time went on, I met my husband, um, who is the number one restorer of 65, 66 Shelby's, Paul Fix the second, And mm. he, we own Fix Motorsports. And uh, we race as well. And we have been racing and restoring cars since the 80s. So we are totally in. We even named our daughter Shelby. So we are pretty addicted. You totally, totally are. And I loved as I was doing some research, um, I can't remember who recommended that I that I invite you on the show and you were so gracious enough to uh, to say yes to be on the show. But as I started to look into some of your background, I'm like, I was trying to figure out, are you an auto lover turned journalist or a journalist turned auto lover? And I think, I think if I were to guess, mm -hmm. you're definitely a lover of the auto before you got into journalism. So tell me a little bit about how that fascination you know, sometimes it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't go the right direction when uh, a dad has a daughter as opposed to a dad has a son and gets him in the garage. Do you have brothers right. and did your brothers not want to be in it or do, are, are you an only child? Well, I consider myself an only child. But it's a long, <laughs> long story. We'll have that over a bottle of tequila sometime. Yeah. Uh, we'll discuss that then. But uh, it's interesting because I was working at my dad's place. He started Stainless Steel Brakes Corporation, which started with Corvette brakes. And I said to him, I was in high school. I said, dad, I said, do you know, why don't we you know, do this for Mustangs and Mopars and whatever he goes, eh, he goes, I don't have time. I, we're doing okay with Corvette. And I said, well, can I ask somebody? And a friend of mine who might actually be listening named Dale Pine had a 66 Shelby. And we took his brakes during the winter and we, we redid them. 
So, um, and it's funny, this all kind of builds into how I got into this because it was literally like, you never know. Like when you leave high school, you think you're going to do this and you find yourself over here and you yeah. don't know how that happened. So what happened was um, I had the break. They were great. Well, there's got to be other people. So I went to the Shelby convention. So this is SAC 8 in Detroit, Shelby American Automobile Club. I've been a member since, oh goodness, way back when. So I went to SAC 8 and I put out the brakes and many people came to me and said, that's a great idea, but I have drum brakes on my Mustang. I went, drum brakes? Like, I didn't even think about that. He said, wow, if you could come up with a way to put those brakes on my car, it would stop in the rain. Mm. Idea. So no one told me I couldn't do these things. My father never said, oh, you can't do this. Just said, figure it out. If you figure it out, you can make it work. He gave me a thousand dollar bonus if I could figure it out. I said, done. You know, for, that's a lot of money in 1982. Mm -hmm, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a long time ago. So I came up with a way to find all the original components from the original supplier, which is Kelsey Hayes. I, I didn't know, picked up the phone. This is before the internet was what it is today. I picked up the phone, talked to someone at Kelsey Hayes, and I bought every single component that was different between drum and disc. My father went nuts. He's like, you better sell these things because this is costing us a ton of money. Sure enough, I created the first drum to disc conversion kit for 6566 Mustangs. Wow. So while I'm selling them and he thought I could never sell them, we had record sales the first year. It came out during the summer, which was between my junior and senior year in high school. So everyone that's known me for years, like friends of mine that used to work at California Mustang are blown away, go, oh, you were like a kid. I'm like, yes, that's why no one ever saw me. You never would meet me at a swap meet or anything. I would kind of sneak around because my voice is very distinctive. Um, and it was best that way, because if you thought you were buying from a kid, you probably wouldn't have bought from me. So, <laughs> but, um, so a friend of mine works at, worked at Motor Week, uh, Craig Singhouse, who is a very dear friend. And he says, you should come on. This is, I was now already into college in 1983 or 84. He says, you should come, you know, come over to Motor Week, drive down, come on, talk to Pat Goss about brakes. It'd be so cool that a woman's talking about brakes. And I thought, oh, okay. So my dad and I drove down there, not knowing that this was the turning point. Mm -hmm. So I know John Davis very, very well. We worked together uh, from there. It stemmed to a whole bunch of things. And John and I are both members of the North American Car and Truck of the Year jury. But in the middle of all this, Craig and I became good friends. And they both said to me, he and John said, you should be a dealer trainer. I'm like, what in the world is that? <laughs> so as new cars come in, someone's got to train the dealers on the new cars and the competitors and what's going on. I did that not knowing who I'm talking to because it was a lot of media people. I got a phone call from Harpo Productions, which is Oprah. Mm -hmm. So I became Oprah's automotive expert. Wow. And little did I know that doors would open because, you know, I didn't right. know who she was. I didn't watch Oprah. I was a car person. You want to talk about carburetors, you know, doing wheels, suspensions. Great. I'm in, but and I have a degree and I'm like, I, I don't know who she is. I work during the day. So that opened doors to CNN when there was just CNN. And then as all these stations came and went, CNN FN and Fox News, uh, and I've been on Fox News since the beginning, Fox and Friends, CNN International. So now I'm doing literally everything from been on Rush Limbaugh's show all the way to Al Jazeera and anything in between. Wow. And that opened up like, like mind blowing. Um, and then people are like, you should write a book. And I'm like, okay. So the first book I wrote and was uh, backed by Tom Corcoran who was the editor in the Mustang Monthly and a great friend. And he's a wonderful novelist, by the way, if you haven't seen Tom's work and don't know who he is, you should look him up. Um, and it's amazing. My best friends are all from this industry. And I met them because of Mustangs, because of my passion for cars. And the people I have met are my absolute best friends. And, and that's one of the things that I love about the auto industry, especially about the restorers. When you meet someone, your friends forever. I have friends that I met at SAC 8 that are still my friends. Amazing. So, and we're like, and it's SAC 46. I'm getting old. Wait a minute. How'd that happen? <laughs> uh, I, amazing. Amazing. And I, I know better. My mom taught me better to than to ever ask a woman's age. But just so you're aware, I, it, the dates that you were saying are so much in alignment with the dates that I have. I was born in 1964. I graduated high school in 1982, went to, to college from 82 to 80, 86. <laughs> yeah, Let me too. ask. I want to. I want to. the same age. We'll 
just I, call it that. Okay, I get it. Old I was enough saying. to drink, old enough to drink and old enough to drive. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, I want to ask this because I think what I heard, and again, Ford Mustang community, I told you as we started to talk about this way in the beginning, I said, I said, she is a shotgun. So you have to pay attention to this interview, which is, which is what I love because it, it helps me get my excitement and my motivation going there too. What would you say, though, would be your zone of genius? Because I heard you mention something about being an inventor, but you didn't use that word. I use that word. So invent, inventing a product. I heard you talk about relationship building. I heard you talk about journalism. I heard you talk about business building. All of those things usually are challenged because they're all in conflict with each other. So where would you say that your zone of genius really is when it comes to anything? Hmm, I don't think of them as conflict. I think of them as a partnership. I'm okay. an entrepreneur. Um, after building my dad's business, I sold out in 96 because my husband and I had started in 1989, a company called Classic Tube. We make prevent brake fuel and transmission lines for all collector cars, all the way from the early 1900s, all the way up into current production things. Um, so we, as enthusiasts, we build what we love. We build them for our friends, our, you know, other car yeah. communities. Um, and that company got really big to the point that I thought I got to work this full time. But uh, when the kids got to be in middle school, I found myself kind of being home for them because, you know, they get in trouble mm -hmm. when they, they they're now 27 and 29. So <laughs> but when they used to come home, I wanted to make sure they did their homework. There wasn't anyone with them, especially of the opposite sex. So I made sure I was <laughs> home. So I moved my office to the house. Um, and that's sort of where it has stayed. So through everything and all the changes uh, that have happened, it's been great because uh, there's so much has happened and I've become an entrepreneur on a couple of boards of directors. I'm on a couple of advisory boards for corporations. Uh, I had no idea that my travel schedule would be crazy. I'm almost a 2 million mile flyer with just Delta alone. Wow. Um, getting up there with American and United, but for the, I've traveled the world and had some great opportunities. And when I see something that I think I can improve for the good of everyone, I jump on board. And that's just how I am. I, I work, you can call me at one o'clock in the morning and I'm probably going to answer the phone and catch you off guard, but you also might receive an email from me at one o'clock in the morning. That's about my, that's about my drop dead time. But then Absolutely. I'm up at seven because the dog who's named after a carburetor, her name is Holly. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was, and I got outnumbered on that one, but Holly after the carburetor. Uh, she's up at 7 a.m. So I got to let her out to do her thing. But, you know, Amazing. I tend to live on a little bit of sleep, a lot of energy. This is my natural energy. This is not caffeine. This is who I am. My husband knew that. I fair warned him. I said, all Absol my friends are guys. I don't want to get, I told him I didn't want to get married. I didn't want kids and I'm not getting rid of my cars. So I lost on two of those, <laughs> but we have more cars. So. <laughs> well, and again, I want to, to come back to the question for a second. Certainly that wasn't a, uh, that wasn't a shot that you couldn't do anything well. I think it was more like you yeah. can do everything well. And, and oftentimes that's people's biggest challenge. You know, the biggest challenge is when you have all of these skills that are in your, um, that, that are in your arsenal and your toolbox. Um, sometimes it's hard to be that person that's cr uh, product creator and the relationship builder at the same time because it they take time away from each other. But I love the fact that right. you said it's a partnership, and that truly is. Hey, let me move on to uh, to something that's really important to those that are listening to our classic Mustang show right now. Uh, mm -hmm. What's in your garage right now? Oh, well, at the home garage or at the shop? Let's see. In the home garage, I have a 2017 Ford GT Heritage, one of 14 cars built. Uh, that is chassis number 27. Wow. We have a Shelby GT500 that is chassis number 27, and we have a GT350 R Heritage. Got to have the Heritage because it's the Wimbledon white and Guardsman blue. Um, and then I have a couple German cars. Um, and the shop, we've got a bunch of 65 Shelbys. I think we've got three or four right now. We have three carryover cars, which are the early 66 cars, the first 252 cars. Um, hope I'm not speaking too Greek for you. I, I get, we get well, deep into the numbers. I, <laughs> I, I know how to wash the car really well. As, aside from the numbers and the digits, I don't know much about it other than oh, no, uh, we're deep. We're deep. <laughs> well, that, but that's why I have experts like you on the show, because you can yeah. kind of, you can be the yin to my yang. So it's very, it's yeah. very good. So that's totally, <laughs> totally cool. Yeah. So my husband just drove off to get a car that he won AACA nationals with. Uh, it is a dark, I'll just make it simple for everyone. It's dark green with a white interior with this ugh, 70s 
green carpet. I said, you know, I love the car. It's beautiful. I cannot stand that carpet color. Um, but he's won thoroughbred classes. He's won at Amelia Island with a 65 Shelby. And we are preparing a 65 Shelby right now to go down to Amelia Island. Uh, and we, I'll, I'm a judge down there as well. So got to go. Got to do it. So, so let's go for, we're going for round two. <laughs> so do you remember you, when you first got bit by the classic Mustang bug? Do you remember what the, what the make model year? You remember yep. any of that? Tell me about it. Yep. 1966 Shelby CX, C, SFM, sorry, I'm thinking Cobra here, SFM 6S210. Uh, I think it just changed hands recently. So it's a carryover car. And his, the best of the 65s and the best of the 66s, and Trevor knows the story, but Carol Shelby needed more cars. So he called Ford and said, hey, I, I need some more, some more Mustangs in their bodies in white. And they said, well, we've only got some 65s, let's work it on 66s. So they sent him 252 of them. And of that, ours, well, we've got a bunch of them now, but that was this 210th car built turned into a Shelby. So it's a 65 with 66 quarter windows and brake scoops. And I just, I love the combination of the two. It's my favorite. And there's nothing more classic than Wimbledon white and guardsman blue. It's just, the car has really been about my husband and I, we bought a 6S074 uh, that was a early Shelby as well um, for our wedding gift to each other. So, oh, so that nice. car has a whole story in the registry. That's a really interesting one. We've had a bunch of cars over the years that we've either found in people's garages, uh, Hertz cars, 66s, and we're always looking for more and we restore them and we keep them. So our collection continues to grow. <laughs> so what would you say you spend more time or maybe which one do you prefer more? That's probably the way to say it. Which one do you prefer more, turning wrenches or sharing your auto wisdom? You know, it's funny. I haven't turned wrench. I'm an ASC certified technician. I'm a Society of Automotive Engineers member since 1982. I like to turn wrenches on weekends, but honestly, I am so buried. Even my husband doesn't even ask me to come out and help him in the garage. It's like, because I'm doing um, a, a Friday segment every Friday. I'm reviewing three cars a week because the manufacturers deliver cars to the house because I'm a World Car of the Year and North American Car and Truck of the Year juror. So I'm getting manufacturers bringing me cars and I'm traveling. So on top of that, I've got you know Fox News, CNN, and whoever else calls, plus two radio shows a week. So uh, it's a lot, and I write for about nine different outlets. So. Yeah, I know, and I and I can't keep up with you. I'm trying to. I, I was trying as soon as somebody introduced me, and and no offense, because I'm not a I'm not a believe it or not, I'm not totally a car guy. And so <laughs> I, when I was introduced to you, I'm like, who is this woman? And tell me more about her. And as I started to really get into the the, the content pretty deep. I'm like, she's doing all of this right now. It's not like this was 30 years ago and this was 20 years ago. This is like business owner, journalist, expert, uh, you know, uh, you are an all around helper. I mean, you love to just share your, your knowledge with the world. Tell me, tell me what you get from it. I mean, dig deep into, I know that you provide a lot of information that helps people, but what do you get from it? What does it help you? Not financially. What's your gift that, sure. you, that you get from this industry? I like being the liaison between the auto industry and consumers. People are so tricked. Like this Friday segment, I'll give you a little teaser. And if you yeah. see this after Friday, then you'll have to say, I already saw it. Um, and talking about is now the time to buy a car. So this chip shortage has caused a lot of issues. People are unsure. Do I buy? Do I sell? And so I go into, should you buy or leave now? You need to know, because it, it's funny. When I was a kid and you and I had our cars next to each other, I'd say, oh, let's take the carburetor off of your car and see if it fits on my car and whether it worked right. We could do all kinds of mods. You can't do that anymore. Now you got people that don't know anything about cars. They don't know how, my father-in-law doesn't know how to change a flat tire. So I have to go over and help him do it. I mean, so I, I realized as I started doing these things that people need a coach. And women want someone they can relate to. They make 85% of the buying decisions. They own 62% of the cars on the road. And if that's the case, they need to be empowered. So I started not just talking to men, but to women, because I have to be relatable to both. The guys have to know that I can talk the talk and walk the walk. And then I'm no BS because I'm not. And then the women have to say, wow, you know, she kind of does know what she's talking about. I could learn something. So I, I kind of try to help everyone I can. And if you're a car person, then let's sit down and talk cars because I'll bench race with you any day of the decade. I love it. I love it. So 
if you got a choice, you, you can you can stay somewhere in the year between 1964 and 2021. So you have the ability to stop a clock and get a second chance to relive the experience. What year Ooh. do you think that you would relive in between that 64 and 2021? Wow, that's a tough call because there's a lot of people I'd like to talk to again, including my parents, but because I got a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. But as far as from car related, sure. Um, I was at Carol Shelby's factory. Oh gosh, my husband and I were either newlyweds or just the year before we got married. And he was there. And you know what? I never took the time to talk to him as much as I thought I would. I mean, my daughter has met him. I have pictures of the two of them together in her room, you know, with the signature, it's Carol Shelby and all that. But I think it would have been nice to talk to him more from a marketing perspective because he may have been a lot of things. And those of us who knew him well, and I knew him pretty well, he was a great marketer. He knew what to say at the right time. He knew how to overcome a lot of things that a lot of people didn't see. And I would also love to sit down with Lee Iacocca. That would be kind of neat to have a conversation with him from a, from a purely marketing, just to see how the brain is wired. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great too. I, I've, I've asked that question a handful of times over the, over the last couple of years in doing the show. And it is, uh, those are two people that are truly the inspiration, you know, uh, 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 Gail Halderman is an, is another that, uh, or, yeah. or Henry Ford, the second or any, or Henry Ford, the original, any of those guys are, are, are totally on the list. Tell me about where you're seeing the car world heading. You know, right now we're dealing in this, in this chip shortage, but where are you seeing even the classic world? Where do you see the car world heading in the next, uh, you know, five or 10 years? Okay. Well, right now the auto industry, as far as aftermarket, the, the sales of used cars is crazy. It's out of control. Uh, I've been looking at cars and watching the market. Uh, we were looking at the value of 66 Shelby's. The, the numbers are like $100,000 more than they were wow. six months ago. People yeah. are crazy. I think what's happening is, and I may be wrong, but my my gut tells me that you look at the stock market, the market's high. People are starting to think, if this thing crashes, I lose everything. I want to drive my investments. Mm -hmm. So you're watching people suddenly say, I'm going to buy artwork. I'm going to buy coins. I'm going to buy cars. So you're watching Porsches go crazy. Ferraris are out of control. You know, certain specific cars. It's not every Mustang, but Shelby's and GT Fastbacks, you're watching the prices go up. You're also seeing that with the parts, if you're looking for like original NOS parts, they're just, people of course don't understand the average person thinks my car's worth a million dollars. No, it's not because there's so many factors that value a vehicle. It's not just the mileage and the wear and tear. There's, there's a lot of uh, history behind each vehicle. And so I'm watching a lot of people uh, invest in the auto industry. Uh, I think it's going to go up for a while. Uh, you can be a speculator, but you know what? Buy what you love. Mm -hmm. And if it makes money, it does. And if it doesn't, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Uh, the Cobra market's a little soft right now. Uh, I'm seeing cars going well below a million, which is a shocker. Um, and then on the new car side, this is absolutely not in any way, shape, or form the time to buy a new or used vehicle. Please don't waste your money. If you really need something, your car's in an accident and the motor blows up and you go, I got nothing, then expect to pay full retail expect there's very few incentives, there's very few finance deals, and know that you are going to pay pretty much the sticker or darn close to it. But don't overlook the conquest and loyalty discounts. If you stick with that brand or switch to a parallel brand, there's money there. And if you don't ask for it, you leave it on the table. And I cover that on my Wow, that is great. What great information. Oh, it's, it's interesting. It's and it's not just on automobiles either. I was in um, a Kawasaki dealership. I have a Harley right now. And I've been looking to maybe get a, a, a second bike or maybe trade my I, I don't I'm not gonna trade my bike in. But at the same time, I was in there. And I saw every single motorcycle, the, the new ones, especially has ADM adjusted dealer markup. And I'll tell you when you have a 10 or a $15,000 bike that is marked up, you know, 20%. That's a huge, huge impact on the guy buying where literally oh, six yeah. months ago, I could have gone in there and, and paid 20% under the sticker because they couldn't, they couldn't sell them. They couldn't <laughs> sell them. So it happens. Lauren, you are a wealth of information, a wealth of knowledge. I, I would love to, under the, under the guise of uh, now that I have you on recording, we'll have this permanently embedded in history here. I would love to invite you back on the show. Uh, would you. you be open to coming back on the show sure. again and share more information? Absolutely. This, yeah, this, was, absolutely. this was so great. Tell our community if they wanted to get more information about um, any of the stuff that you do, uh, your, your journalist stuff, so the car coach stuff, and also for your, uh, for your tube company also. Talk about that. Okay. The company's name is Classic Tube, and you can go to classictube.com or you can call their number 
uh, and 800 882 3711. All of our sales staff are car guys and they can talk. Actually, my daughter works there now too. She's in business development. So you might get Shelby uh, and we can help you and get you some product right away. We do supply pretty much everyone national car depot and such. So if you're in a mad rush, they may have it in stock. Uh, and as far as me, I, I'm at Car Coach Reports. I cover the auto industry. I review cars literally. I just put a Hellcat Durango review up, which was a blast. I took it to the drag track. Um, Hey, why not? It's not mine, right? Uh, and uh, <laughs> you can also drive it like you rent it. <laughs> that's right. Buy it. You stole it. Right. Um, <laughs> True. And, and, uh, <laughs> I, rental cars are a whole other conversation. Um, and as far as social media, I'm literally on every form of social media, whether it's everything from Getter to CloudHub to MeWe Gab to the standards of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything is at Lauren Fix. Uh, if you can't find me there, just type in Car Coach Reports. I am all around and uh, more than happy to take people's questions through social media. Remember, I get bombarded, so I'll be happy. It may take me a couple of days to get to you. But I'll tell you, she was she got back to me. I think I reached out to you through Instagram and, and uh, you, did. you did get back to me. And, and I and I so very much appreciate it. I had no clue what I was getting into, and I'm glad I got into it. So. <laughs> Lauren, and, and by the way, uh, Ford Mustang community, all of the information that Lauren just provided in terms of uh, social media and her website will be right there in the uh, in the show notes also. Thanks, Lauren, for being on the show. Loved having you here. Thank you for having me. Ford Mustang community, if you uh, want to get more information about anything that we talked about today, just head over to the show notes. There'll be links right in there. Keep it safe, keep it rolling, and keep it on the road. Until next time.